Hey everybody. Yo. You can get started here in just a minute with the weird things. What is uh what does your shirt say, Justin? Oh, I'm glad you noticed. Uh this is my uh I'm a journalist uh shirt uh from the Ray Gun shop in downtown Des Moines. Uh and it just asks the the dumb question so I don't have to. Like, hi, didn't I interview you four years ago? That's amazing. Uh, uh, but, I, yeah, I, yeah. It, did you just stumble across it in the wild or no i uh, uh ray gun is actually friends of ours because four years ago they actually uh we just cold went in there and tried to sell them contenders and they bought them and they've loved contender ever since so uh they've become this sort of like stop on the road for a lot of candidates uh they do a lot of fun political shirts um but I interviewed uh, a homie from there on Friday's episode of the uh, show. Yesterday morning, my kids cornered me and and made us all play the contender. So uh, a lot of longevity oh, really? to the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Contender's oh, great. That's awesome. When you when you get it, especially with a lot of people, when you get in the big thing and really do the dramatics of like we're doing a debate and we're all being like yeah. characters, uh, it's it's a blast, man. It's a blast. Yeah, I um uh you know uh, uh I'm always happy to hear that because uh, you know you play the game 50 billion times and eventually you're just like well, this is worthless. These are worthless <laughs> words on works. cards. Is this like, fun? Yeah. Like yeah. Oh, all right, hello everybody. We're doing weird things today. Um uh Andrew's out on assignment one more time one more week, but uh he should be back next week. Uh you guys uh you guys ready to do this thing? Is yeah, ready. Ready, gonna... ready, ready. Right, here we go. Let's do it. We're going to start weird things in three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Weird Things podcast. I am your host, as always, every single week, Bryce Castillo, joined, as always, <laughs> every single week with Brian Brushwood. You know, the bit gets less funny the more true it becomes. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> and Justin Robert Young. Yeah, live from Iowa. Covering the biggest, uh, you know, out here on assignment. I made it to work. Just want to let everybody know. <laughs> Look, here. man, here's the hierarchy. You got the Iowa caucus. Mm. Slightly more interesting yeah. is the current impeachment of the sitting president. Slightly more sure, interesting yeah. is the Weird Things podcast. So here we are. Exactly. That's right. You know, I'm making it here for you, friends. The Weird Things faithful. <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we've got a scenario for you guys. I need. We need a little bit of help. We need a little bit of help. All right, go ahead. Ready. Uh, in the... Um... You know what? I have $391 million of help ready to go. There's just one thing I need. <laughs> <laughs> you just need $30 for the taxes. Sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and have that all come in Amazon gift cards. Please <laughs> and thank you. Uh, we're, we actually need some help in Tahoe, California, the Tahoe region of California. Uh, what's the matter in Tahoe? What is the lake not blue enough? Is the powder not not skiable enough? Not is, is, enough is, for is, yeah. is the the Reno not Vegas enough? I mean, I don't I don't get it. What what could be wrong in Tahoe? <laughs> So uh, we're gonna, actually going to go back in time. This is inspired by true events. Uh, November 2018. We're going back to November 2018. Not too far along ago. Ah, uh, the 2018ers. 
And uh, we've got a call. We're, we're, we're sitting, we're, here we are in the California Highway P- Patrol office, the CHIPS offices. And uh, someone, someone has asked for help. Someone has broken into their home. I do like the fact that in the chat room, they're already just saying spiders, spiders. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. so we're, we're sitting at Chips HQ, Chips scratching HQ. off lottery tickets, <laughs> uh, uh, quoting, uh-huh. quoting our favorite family ties moments. And then suddenly the phone rings. And, and I'm sorry, you need what? Yeah, uh, so, someone's broken into the house. The alarm on my house is going off. We need to send someone over there. There's a break-in. Someone's gone into my house, broken into my house. Listen. And this is under the purview of, of chips. Justin, I, I, yeah. I, I'm almost done scratching off this bingo lottery card. They make them intentionally complicated so that they uh, take up a lot of time to do. It's a little bit like grading homework, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to win $5. I'm going to need you to go down the unbelievably beautiful Vista Road Turn left at the sure. sapphire blue golden pond. I'm going to need you to go past all the gorgeous wet redwoods. I'm going to need you to ski the double black diamond over there with a Merlot in hand. And then oh, I'm going to need you to with uh, the Merlot is <laughs> then I'm going to need you to uh, 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 take two or three wives and become a Mormon because this is in Salt Lake City. And then I think that's where it's at. Uh, I, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right so you uh you, you you show up to the scene of the crime uh what do yes. you do what do you do you're at the broken in house also i just showed up i was like you know what turns out it was only two dollars which was a bummer because this is a ten dollar ticket sure yeah uh all right so immediately uh i i i i, I step boldly as the handbook uh suggests i put both hands on my hips and i say Hey, knock it off! <laughs> uh, and I just wait to see whether or not there's any reaction. Uh, you maybe hear a little bit of stirring, but it's, uh, but it seems like it's far on the other end of the house. I tap Justin on the shoulder twice, and I whisper, "I rolled 18 on charisma. Let me try." Yeah. And then I do the exact same thing okay. and say, "Hey, knock it off!" But for reals this time. The, the stirring yeah. seems to have faded. Ah, doggone it. All right. So uh, I, I look to Brian. I'm like, hey, this is going to take evasive maneuvers. So uh, I ask him to follow me, and, and I take one step. I put both of my hands up. Uh, uh, so uh, in style. combat ready position. <laughs> uh, and then I start strafing into the... In, into the the house. I reach uh, into my pocket and, and look uh, for a nickel as I comment loudly to Justin on how nickels are better than quarters because you would think those serrated edges st- scrape off the silver stuff, but they don't. <laughs> they, they make it real messy. You want the 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 the, the regular edge of a nickel. Yeah, the unperfect. Or a penny. Oh, a penny for sure. Uh, I can't hear what Brian's saying because I'm too busy strafing. Because <laughs> um, I brought my strafe game. I worked all summer on it, so now I'm really... <laughs> Getting to debut it, uh, and I feel really, really good uh, as I strafe into uh, uh, the the house. But I do have this lingering thought, uh, almost subconsciously saying, "Like, yeah, I would have thought a quarter would have been better." <laughs> <laughs> All right, you very professionally strafe through the house, Justin Crabby Young, Officer Crabby, uh, strafes through yeah. the house. You've cleared the house. The house is empty, but you do see signs of activity in the kitchen. Also, I scrape off under the B7. I, I scrape that one off. Go for the okay. B7. Always go for B7. Uh, 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 oh, I, I, I take a look uh, into the kitchen, and I, I give a very quizzical, what have we here? Uh, and then uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the, the assistant officers, one of the one of the assistant police officers, shows up and says, "It looks like they stole some bread and some fruit." I uh, use sniff. <laughs> you, you sniff what used to be bread and fruit in the kitchen. But oh, you find okay. None. I'm like Justin. I think there was bread and fruit in here. Um, is there any other signs of distress throughout the kitchen, Bryce? Uh, the door is a left, a, the door is left ajar. It looks like if somebody was here, they left, uh, maybe a little hastily. So this, does it look kind of like, a, a busted up? Like, are there broken like, things did a fight around? go down? It looks a little turned yeah. over. It looks a little turned over, but you wouldn't expect that in the kitchen. But yeah, it does look like this. Someone's turned the place over. 
Um, because I got a little pet theory, and I'm using that very deliberately. Brian, I don't believe that this break-in was conducted by a human at all. Wait I a think minute. It was probably some weird kind of animal. Well, name just two animals that it might have been. <laughs> one with a bunch of legs and one with no legs at all. I dare you. Oh. Uh <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, we do, we could, Brian, if we immediately started looking for spiders and snakes, then eventually we would face uh, charges of profile. Okay, so I go to the piano, <laughs> I go, I go, I go to the piano. Because now I'm just stopping random spiders on the, on the road, and I violated their spider rights, and, uh, you know, I'm just looking at all these snakes, and they're calling me a pig, and I'm like, well, hey, look, I'm just following the program. I uh, go to the nearest piano and begin to play the 1960s Spider-Man theme. <laughs> do, 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 do. Uh, and uh, suddenly, suddenly, your radios crackle with excitement. <laughs> Boys, come in. We've got a we've got a new break, and we need you to go over to uh, to the the park. I, I turn to Justin. I look him right in the eye. Say. I'll get the Merlot. <laughs> and then I go over yeah. and I get the Merlot. We need you to go to uh, exactly. the, the park next to Lake Tahoe for us. <laughs> I said, well, Brian, there's only one thing left to do. And we both put our hands up in karate position and begin <laughs> strafing out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, uh, you make your way out to Lake Tahoe and you find this scene. Another break-in, but now at a car. <laughs> Justin, if I'm not mistaken, this this looks like another break-in, but but at a car. <laughs> yeah, you know, Brian, I I'm glad we didn't immediately start rousting about all the uh, snake dens and uh, a spider. Yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out any way that either a spider or a snake would be able to rip out that window the way it looks like it's ripped out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the we're so what, we're looking at an image of a of a of, a, of an SUV where. The back passenger window has been just mangled. More of a crossover, but I, I I'm there with you oh, in spirit. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, Brian, this would take some real, uh, some real um, um, power. Uh, I'm gonna say that we are probably on the lookout for some kind of deer or moose. Oh, I was thinking like a wildcat. This, this, uh, this has mountain lion written all over it. Look, man. Oh, geez, Louise. Uh, uh, except the this one, the, like the too. door is physically. Is this a Bigfoot attack? Like, like if Bigfoot were to attack uh, a, I mean, a crossover, this it, is what it would look like. It is the Weird Things podcast. It's, that's a that's a possibility. Um, yeah, Brian. This doesn't look like a, a wildcat to me. That this this looks this looks slightly bigger. Uh, I'm I'm. Do, uh, do, like the I, door I, I just, looks just, like I, it's been ripped off the hinges, but but do we think somebody ripped it off or smashed into it or what? Yeah, I think it could be. It just got hit so hard that the whole frame popped out. Right? What about a bear? Do we think it's a bear? Bears also a possibility. I think maybe it was that old rumbly tumbly bear <sighs> walking around causing trouble. He was he was like he was like I'm just on the run from the coronavirus. Oh, I love honey. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get political. <laughs> uh, um yeah, I I think bears definitely a possibility. Uh, oh oh my goodness. Uh, this is an APB. All all everyone return back to to the CHP headquarters. All points bear? Uh, all points bear. Everyone return back to the CHP headquarters at Donner Pass. Uh we have an an alert. We have a burglar trying to break in right now. No. No, no, no. We have actual video of a bear <laughs> on his hind legs opening the door like your high roommate coming in to in front of the the, the vending machines. Oh my god. And he's just he he pops in and he looks around and he just makes himself at home. So this is a big deal in Tahoe. So this I remember this, this is a big deal in Tahoe. As if it's not a big deal everywhere. Uh, so uh, move over, Mr. President. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so this was back in November. Uh this is part of a uh wave of of bear incidents. Bear, uh, ba bears turning to a life of crime. Yeah. You know, back when I was back when I was around uh, uh, the bear community. 
really respected the laws and they would stop at a red light. But now these delinquent bears, they're just ripping all these doors off the hinges. Uh, we've got did, some footage uh, of did, the kitchen. Did, did you say the the bear area community? <laughs> Is it like the Bay Area? <laughs> the bear. <laughs> the bear area. The bear community. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, so the uh, the the kitchen break in that was actually someone caught a video of a bear breaking in, uh, getting food because the the bears get very uh, uh, brazen when it is in this time of year, the November time when they're getting ready for hibernation. Uh, they just get super brazen and show up uh, in in human territory. They get brazen and they want them raisins. Here's a bear in uh, the. The parking lot of a uh, Safeway, uh, just trying to figure out how these carts work. <laughs> He's just like, my very existence undermines the title of this store. It's an unsafe way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so basically, the, the the residents of Tahoe just have to make double sure that they are parked in the correct places, and and, and just hope that a random bear on 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 a hunt for that last snack isn't gonna uh, come and disrupt them. Well, there's actually kind of a two two thoughts about it, right? Uh, there are uh, people who people people don't know what to do, right? Like there are activists who want to protect the bears who don't like that there are policies in place to, um, you know, try to dis disable, disarm, and in some cases kill these bears um, because they're just they're they're bears. They're trying to live their life, uh, but of course, bears are very dangerous and they have the means to maim people very very grotesquely uh, so I don't, I don't know it, it, it's a very weird intersection of nature and human society where like this they need they need to go find food and people keep developing out and, and building out into nature I don't know what, uh, how do you guys feel about that there, there was, man, I, 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 this is probably on me to do the research to find out, but uh, I'd be curious to know what the number of bear attacks looks like over time. Because if I remember correctly, like uh, 50, 60 years ago, people would go to Yellowstone and they were actually, if I remember right, encouraged to feed the bears and to just open up the windows and say, hi, bear. Like, like the idea of a bear attack was a very rare thing, but mm -hmm. I don't, I don't. I don't know if I misremember. Where, did, where that. did that come from then? Like where did I mean, we I mean, it, it takes like it? like very quickly. <laughs> it only takes one or two bear attacks for you to suddenly realize, like, oh wait, all things being equal, telling humans don't say hi to the bears will never yield in a lawsuit, but not telling that yeah. may <laughs> yield many lawsuits. Uh, from Wikipedia, in the 1990s, bear populations had been decreasing because of increased hunting of bears for sustenance and for trophy prizes. Uh, let's see. The practice is still in place of getting those pelts where it's necessary or legal. More recently, laws have been instated to protect the dwindling population of bears. However, as stated in Return of the Grizzly by David Whitman, these laws have increased the tensions between bears and humans. While this allows the bear populations to recuperate, it also prevents people from killing bears that have invaded their property and killed their livestock. What about hurting their feelings? Oh, yeah, that bear. That yeah. bear gave me the finger. <laughs> it gave me the, the yeah, third finger. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Throwing bear claws at a bear claw. <laughs> yeah. Go away, bad it's guys. Like, isn't this? Isn't this irony? <laughs> no laws. Right in the eye. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. Uh, hey, you want to know what else is a, a surprisingly fun time? is uh, going on over to patreon.com slash weird things. If you head on over to patreon.com slash weird things right now, boy, howdy, do I have something that uh, uh, is very exciting that awaits you. Yes, inner peace and fulfillment. When you know that you are doing your part to support this weekly guide into the world of weird. Thank you to everybody who does it. And uh, if you haven't done it, I mean, what's up? Yeah, what's up? What 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 are you some bear? You 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 want to want us to think you're a bunch of spiders or snakes or snakes and spiders in an unholy alliance wrapped up in a bear costume? Yeah. Reveal your true self. Reveal yourself to be a bear and pledge one dollar per episode at patreoncom slash things. It's a roaring good time. Rawr. Rawr. Uh, uh oh, uh oh. It's the new item bear, alert. Bear alert. It's the new item alert, folks. We found a new item. 
Oh, okay. It's it's not the uh, the budging uh, the, the budging uh, the 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 burgeoning uh, spider snake romance. <laughs> no, not uh, quite. The, 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 they're called spider as a as a as a unit. I think those are millipedes. I think it might be like centipedes. <laughs> so uh, no, we got a new alert, folks. I I want to just brace yourselves, all right? Because this is important. We found a new item. Uh, looks like a box. Looks like a box that was at the bottom of the sea, mm -hmm. and then everything dried out, and it looks like it was meant to hold fireworks, but they forgot about it for a summer. Yeah, it does look charred, right? Yeah, or, or and it looks like buying, there's or, a or, little or, bit or of a... Think that that's like rot? It looks like a little bit of, I don't know, like half a PVC pipe or something in the middle. Oh, interesting. Uh, this, uh... this item is recently found, and... I can tell you it's kind of, it's a little important. It's a little important. Uh, what do you think? Is, is it the Ark of the Covenant? I I mean, we're looking at it, so I, I'm going to say no. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I mean, a good first choice, though, Brian. That was good because uh, we could have really made some news if you were right. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's no evidence that it's not the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> I guess not. The real bird box situation. Uh, I really think that that's going to be the next. If I if I interview any campaign staff for the rest of the month while I'm on the road, I'll just I'm just going to try to work. Just first question, number one, does this look like the Ark of the Covenant? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, that's what I thought. Like, that's what I thought. Is there any reason you could think of that it's not the Ark of the Covenant? <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, uh, 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 you know, obviously tough loss there in Iowa. Uh, I think you're really trying to rebound here in New Hampshire. But also, for real, like, give me a reason why it wouldn't be the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> like, I'm just... Does this look like I'm the Ark of the Covenant to, see, to you? Yeah. yeah, I'm just trying to see both sides on this. So this was a discovery in Chechnya, I believe. No. Ah, the Chechnyan Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the <laughs> Chechnyan Covenant. Um, I, I believe that's right. Or at least this is a radio. Yeah. radio hold on, prog. hold on. Is it is, is is this like a desiccated um is this like a radioactive thing? No, but I think you're getting uh, you're getting close. Looks like 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 a bucket so, of, of depleted uranium or something. Really the question is how old is it? Obviously Chechnya is a disputed region in Russia. There's been internal oh, I guess, uh, uh, warfare. I, it is in uh, Olomouc in the Czech Republic. Excuse me. Not oh, Czech, 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 Republic. Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Yeah. Got it. Republic. Sorry, okay. Got okay. Still still in the communist bloc area. Still could be radioactive. Uh, okay. It, it is weird. Is it a weapon of some site? No, it uh... is it a ma is it is it imagine dragons <laughs> if it's radioactive? <laughs> no, it seems to have been a, a functional good. Um, functional good it really does look like just a desiccated it looks to me that if what you wanted was a block of concrete and you would have just hastily assembled a framework to fill up with concrete and then like you were impatient for it to dry so you just covered it in gas and lit it and all the wood started to burn off mm -hmm. that's what it looks like to me uh we've got so let me ask you a question another angle um here. all right yeah i guess well this kind of answers it Brian, do you think that this was underwater or buried? Um, well, now I it that I like see what are, looks we are like looking at a pond, yeah, yeah, it looks it looks like a well. It looks like they dug a well and this got pulled out of it, or maybe it was dropped into the well. Uh, yeah, hey, look at that! You got it. You got it pretty pretty much right. So this is a wooden water well um, that is is pretty old. the The wooden object that we were looking at appears to be a crate, but the crate is. Special. The crate is actually pretty special. Um, it is very likely, at least as far as we found, the, the oldest, Ark of the Covenant. The oldest <laughs> wooden structure, the oldest wooden thing that we we know about. Well, hold on. Why would why would that survive underwater in a well? Because it was underwater. 
I, I would have thought that would have sp sped up the, uh, unless like, a, uh, okay, so maybe it's like a high mineral water or something. There's nothing living to eat away at the wood. Or... So, yeah, it was underground. The, the well uh, was, under, was underground, so it could be that the composition of the water helped out a lot. But uh, if it had been drained, they would have, it would have been destroyed, <sighs> is, right. is my understanding. Um, in fact, to can, to restore and preserve this, they are actually going to submerge it, submerge it in sugar, in sucrose, uh, which will help also try to preserve it. So gross. Um, but so this, okay, so <laughs> so thank you. You know that this is the uh, possibly the oldest wooden object. How old do you think? Welcome to Prehistoric Hoarders. This box <laughs> yeah, doesn't know, serve right? anyone anything, but they keep holding it around. What's going on? Uh, what do you what do you think, Bry? Couple. I mean, for I mean, wood, wood, go, than... wood goes away pretty quick. It feels like two thousand is about as much as my brain can comprehend. Some wood sticking around for. Yeah, back in twenty. Yeah. 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 Right around there. The Roaring Twenty. Yeah. You know, like that back, would be Back when Jesus Everybody first started like... drinking. <laughs> and he finally could rent a, an ox cart because <laughs> he was of age. <laughs> but it still it still wasn't like the normal adult price for the ox cart. You still had to yeah. wait a few more years. That's right. They, they were like, well, insurance, it'll fix over time. Over time. And Jesus is like, uh, man, this is bullshit. All right, Sorry. so <laughs> 2,000 years. Uh, and what if I told you it was a little older than that? A little older. A little oh, older. wow. No, I thought it was going to be shorter than that. Uh, uh, what do you say? We bumped that bad boy up to uh, 5,000 years. Huh? Okay, but but now we get at the point, how long does it take for uh, wood to become petrified? Like, that's tens of thousands of years, right? Like, petrified wood tends to be I mean, like 100,000 years. You, you, you just startle it the right way. <laughs> or you, <laughs> or you caress it the right way. Ooh, <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 5,000 years is much closer, uh, using, uh, how did they test this? Using Ra radiocarbon dating, dendrochronological data, and uh, some amount of ra some amount of radio date, carbon radio dating, and looking at the rings of the trunks, uh, on the object, they believe that the, tr the wood that was used was chopped down in either... 5,255 BC or 5,256 BC, 7,000 years ago. Wow. How remarkable that they're able to say, like, it's either mm -hmm. this extremely far along date or this other exactly almost the same very far away date. Apparently, the rings on the trunk is, are what give it a very precise estimate. Uh, oh, Seven that would be because uh, there are seasons, like the thickness of the rings in the wood would match sort of like a fingerprint, other known. Wait, but then you would have to have other known trees to match it against. Um, and if this is the oldest wood, when I, what I, would you match it against? I guess well, it's where dendrochronological no, 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 sure that, data comes in. Yeah, I'm sure that there are other trees that are that old. Uh, uh, this is the oldest, like... Uh, a man-made thing of wood that I guess we've found since then. What do you but think you it was used for? Probably that are as old. Is it? Yeah, uh, you think there's an old prospector who was taking naked baths in there, as he as he counted his gold nuggets. I think mostly it was for naked miner baths. You know, like, <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know whether you spell it yeah. M-I-N-E-R or M-I-N-O-R, yeah. and I'm sure both are equally um, likely. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty positive that we're gonna go with O on this one, Brian. <laughs> we're just gonna kind of we're gonna kind of move past it. But yeah, yeah I would uh, I, I would I would say that that I mean, or some kind of carry. I don't know what are they. What were, what were wares to sell five five thousand years ago? Like a, a glass thing, maybe some other goop. You know, like I think they was there to carry that. <laughs> there, uh, you go to the market and it's like, what's this? You're like, I don't know. It's a square made of wood, huh? <laughs> got a wood square for you. What, yeah. what do you got? I'll, I'll, I'll trade you a crystal pickaxe for it. Uh, apparently there were not signs of settlements in the vicinity of where this well was discovered. And archaeologists believe that the well was an isolated construction that served a number of settlements located at a distance away. But, but the well looks gigantic. <laughs> it's not, it's not like they just drilled straight down. It looks like they, 
it's big enough that you could swim in it or i wonder how much of that is um of the actual uncovering of the well well if 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 this box is down there then i guess big enough for that box at the at the very least i think the I box also, no i think the uh, box is the well what? Imagine what kind of what kind of prankster the guy who dug the well is that he didn't do it any near any of the settlements. He's like, <laughs> hey man, you can just dig this by our settlement. Like, nah, fam, I'm gonna be out here in the middle of nowhere. See ya. Uh, but by the way, uh, you need to give me back my box because I'm gonna drop it down in the well just for. Starts laughs. tapping his forehead like, can't steal your water if they don't know where the well is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So there we go, everyone. Uh, new, uh, new oldest wooden object confirmed. Put on the board. How cheap? Take that, Regis Philbin. <laughs> How cheap? <laughs> How cheap was that joke? Very cheap. Right? That was a very cheap shot from Brian to a broadcasting legend. I, I just, I just, I just picked the the one person I could think of that could handle it. <laughs> yeah, he. How cheap do you think you could get a rocket into space? Uh, theoretically, you get a big enough trebuchet. No, wait, trebuchets cost money. Um, you have to buy the trebuchet at the trebuchet store. Yeah, or buy the you could probably trebuchet get it on Prime. assembly <laughs> kit. Um, Bling Prime. The cheapest way to get a rocket into orbit. Now we we've talked a lot about SpaceX and how it's. I don't know. They're getting southwards of below 50 million, like maybe 20, 20 million to orbit. Yeah. Google says a very quick Google launch. Google says 57 million to launch for a SpaceX rocket. Yeah. But we, but we also know that, that they're sort of recuperating their investment right now. So like their cost is less than that, but, but they're well, sort let's of say, uh, a client side. How much would a client spend to get a rocket up? I know that, I know that NASA has, how low could we get that grown tired of giving the Russians uh, in, in Baikonur, Kazakhstan, I think, I think they're up to like $80 million per astronaut that they're sending up to the International Space Station. Uh, it's getting very expensive, which is why they're, they're very excited to move back to SpaceX. Um, how much cheaper? Like, are, we're talking about practical, available right now? Uh, we're talking about no. We're, 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 this, this is this is the floor, and I assume that part of this is that it's going to be a far more manageable number than we might uh, 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 expect. But Bryce, uh, this is to get a whole rocket because I know that there's like a whole thing that you can get space on on a rocket. Like, uh -huh. uh, is this the entire payload, or, or uh, we're going to say with... a payload of 450 pounds of cargo into space? Okay, the cheapest I could think of that I know about is. Virgin Galactic is still, last I heard, uh, they basically, they have an airplane, they take the airplane really up high, and then they drop the shuttlecock Spaceship One that, that, that fires. I believe the fuel, literally, is, is old tires. Mm -hmm. It runs on rubber, and, uh, and then it blasts off, and I believe that trip is like $200,000, but it's suborbital space. And, and that is not, a tourist no, no, he's trip. Talking, he, yeah, he's he's talking about a rocket. Like, like like you are putting something into space. You're putting satellites into space. I yeah. would be because that number is seems to be about right. About two hundred thousand dollars. Galactic will give you a trip in their weird plane. So if we're talking about a proper <laughs> rocket that makes it all the way, come to Virgin Galactic. Take a two hundred thousand dollar trip in our weird plane. It looks weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, are, are we talking about? Hi, orbit? I'm Richard Branson. This plane is so weird. <laughs> Come give me two hundred thousand dollars. We'll ride in it. It's weird. <laughs> one for each wing. Don't try to just get one <laughs> wing, though. It won't work. <laughs> it's so brilliant. This plane. Oh my god, it's the weirdest. Oh. All right. I'm I named my company <laughs> inexperienced. What a weird name for space travel. Who would want to go on inexperienced airlines? I don't know. It worked once. Why not again? Virgin, uh, where our original name was, we don't know what we're doing. Fumble around no, clumsily, like, the airline. Incel Air. Our, origi <laughs> yeah, Incel. our original name was, uh, I swear to God, this never happened. <laughs> um, we're going to offer mobile phone access. Again, only it'll be called Incel Service. 
That's what my in cell phone is. I need to charge my in cell phone. Your in cell phone. It only lasts for thirty years. Uh, okay, so rocket. I'm gonna I'm gonna Look say if we're talking about a proper size rocket to orbit, I would be absolutely astonished if we were able to come up with any justification for it to be less than two million dollars. Less than two million. All right, Justin. Yeah, I, I mean, I again, I, I kind of feel like we're gonna get some crazy bargain basement number out of this. So, so I would take the under. I'll, I'll take one million. Here's a number for you. How about zero? Zero dollars down with in cell phones. All you need is your <laughs> dignity. So uh, there is a startup called Astra. I, I wonder if we've we've reported on them or not. Um, they have quote unquote, emerged from stealth, as TechCrunch calls it. Uh, and they are backed by DARPA, and they are doing uh, part of a DARPA flight challenge uh, to uh, find a company, to award a prize to a company that can launch two rockets from two different locations within a certain amount of time. Um, Astra believes, uh, well, Astra right now says that they can launch um, in... Uh, it, it, Profitably, they told Bloomberg they can launch profitably right now for two point five million dollars per mission. So close to my guess, and would like to get wow. that down to one million dollars per flight. The, uh, the, wow, that is my guess. <laughs> that is, it's under. And DARPA is really pushing this because um, apparently DARPA had actually worked with Virgin and another uh, another airline or another uh, rocketry company. Uh, to try to have fast and responsive, find a responsive um, launch capability. Because SpaceX, you know, you plan it and it's a big, it's a big deal. But the idea behind Astra is, um, as Bloomberg calls it, they want to be the uh, FedEx of space. So this is for what micro satellites or human sized payloads or do, uh, do they give an idea as far as scale? I mean, 450 pounds is what I pulled from. From this article, I don't know how much that is relative to like a satellite. Um, well, uh, I mean, who's to say what the exchange rate between the pound sterling and the and the euro is going to be? So God. now that they're decoupled, <laughs> Brexit, they Brexited, they Brexited. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward now that we have to be in the same community with like you know the couple that broke up, and you're just like, I'm not picking sides, guys. Like we're still all friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got one other, another <laughs> rocket startup going on. This is a twofer. It's a rocket twofer. Bam, bam. Uh, you, right. you ever heard of Skyrora? Skyrora. 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 Is can wow. you uh, uh, spell it, they please? Should, they should. They should. They should blast that name into space <laughs> and never let it come back. <laughs> yeah. Could could you use it in a sentence? Uh, uh, dang it. Skyrora is down. The humanity. <laughs> uh, S-K-Y-R-O-R-A. They have an interesting uh, approach to building rockets. Uh, they have two sort of interesting things. One, they are 3D printing. <laughs> they are going to do it blindfold. <laughs> <laughs> I, what's funny is like we were talking about DARPA and all that. And it's like I just want to create like a like have a weekend event where everybody has to make the most deadly weapon. But they're all made of cardboard. And we call it like the, the DERPA challenge or something. <laughs> uh -huh. So Skyrora is 3D printing some of their parts. Uh, you can 3D print stuff. You don't have to print it in like PLA plastic. You can do it in metal and stuff. Supposedly, this gives them very accurate machining. Um, but they've also developed their own type of fuel. Wait, fuel? fuel. So, so it's not a it's not a hydrocarbon petroleum. Uh, I I know that we've talked previously about the fact that uh, SpaceX has settled on using methane, which is very efficient and, and also a gas that they can manufacture on the surface of Mars or, or scoop up from the lakes of Titan. Um, it is a hydrocarbon. It has hydrocarbon chain lengths between C12 and C15, if that means anything to you. Is it the, uh, uh, what was the fuel they used in the Martian? Uh, something been poop. Uh, okay. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> uh hydrobenzene is that what it, is that what it is is it, it but 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 if it's a new fuel it's a new proprietary fuel it's called ecocene it's called ecocene like kerosene okay uh, is it is it made by what uh, 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 algae or something it's, man 
these guys and their names, man. What the hell? Sky like, did, did we just did we just go with the first guess on on all of them? We didn't kick it around the room at all. <laughs> hey, man, here at Flyams McGofar, <laughs> we take our names seriously. <laughs> Yeah, so, that's why we that's why we have our, our proprietary fuel. Go go juice. <laughs> the, the, the stuff. You know, now, if you rocket. sign up for our rewards program, hooray! <laughs> then you can get all the flying <laughs> go go juice you want here at, at Travel Big Spaces. And do you we, have your card? Like no, bit. I left my card back at home. I don't know. <laughs> Take your the phone bit number. got too the bit got too real because hooray would be an amazing name for a rewards program. <laughs> I'm just so excited. <laughs> like, thank you for your purchase. You've earned fifty. Hooray! <laughs> uh, Ecocene is special because it is made out of plastic waste. Uh, hold on. They now, can is, take... that, is that one of those things where it sounds really good in a press release, but secretly it's not? energy efficient and 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 is 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 not actually well i guess I, I don't know the answer to that they can take a thousand kilograms of plastic waste and make 600 kilograms of ecocene fuel it generates 45 percent less greenhouse gases to refine um and i guess you could potentially use it as in lieu of other fuels in the future I wonder if it's the kind of thing where whatever the process is, you, you do a little bit of what a math and sort of deduct whatever greenhouse gases were created from the original plastic. Like like you do a little bit of accounting mojo, and so it becomes a net negative. Um, because like on the surface, I mean, not to be a negative Nelly here, but but it's like that's that's one of those things that is so tasty. It 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 smells like headline bait to me justin and uh, oh, what, yeah, what do your yeah. journalist I, I, instinct I think, say I think your your uh i think your instinct is correct that it's probably one of those things that uh, uh especially on a mass scale might not actually be i mean it, it's like the same thing as, as recycling that there are some towns where recycling is actually like a net negative to the environment because it costs so much to get the trash you know get, get the separated trash to the right facility that by the time that you quantify those gains it really isn't there aside from making everybody feel good that they are contributing to the environment which i guess is is a is certainly a, a, a you know some kind of quantifiable ben uh, benefit and i don't know though yeah. the only question is with this is like uh, something tells me that proprietary is a more important part of that sentence than cheap or efficient I think it's because there is a standard for jet fuel. It seems like there's a jet fuel A, and I think because this is outside of it, um, it, it looking over. That's interesting. I don't, I don't know anything what, about like like for example, you could not open up a gas station and sell instead of diesel gas. fuel fuel sell vegetable oil. But there are people who have retrofitted their diesel vans to run on vegetable fuel. So you add that word proprietary. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, okay, we're outside of this established ecosystem, and we're able to run on our own thing, which yeah. has its own benefits, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't know any – it very well could be that, you know, uh, it, it, the, the, it, it costs more to make it uh, – uh, something on their website that I've found, it seems to be that they want to make a process where they can install uh, the refining machinery uh, in places where the, the trash would be, um, as well as uh, creating – quote, machine vehicles capable of retrieving waste from the oceans and converting it into fuel uh, on the ship. Yeah, I don't even mind. Let's say, let's say uh, ounce for ounce, it actually costs more. And let's say you are doing some flexible budgetary shenanigans to justify it uh, in the long term. I mean, that's still a net positive for the planet, right? If, if we're basically taking the existing matter that currently is set to rot in a in a uh, landfill yeah. and and uh, yes we're spending more money to convert it into a fuel and then we deduct the previous you know uh, carbon footprint from the new one uh, that don't that don't seem bad yeah it's it's interesting yeah. to see, see the least. So uh, Sky Aurora. Plants. I like the way I already I I proposed a theory. I indicted them. I assumed they were guilty, and, and then, then I justified why it's still okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So their Skyrora XL rocket is set to launch in 2022. So we will probably know more uh, in the coming years. Hey, you guys want to see the sun? Uh, ooh, uh, I mean, I did once. Uh, I like it when it's hiding behind the moon. Well, this one's not uh, not hidden. Let me show you here a picture. Oh, I think I know what story this is. I think I saw oh, this. Oh, oh, my God. Do you know what, uh, Justin, do you know what you're looking at right now? No, I don't. It looks very, like, uh, you could tell me it were, uh, if you had not set it up with the idea that this is somehow sun-related, uh, like, I would I would say it almost looks like, you know, some peek into the body or some kind of, uh, you know, like bodily fluids. It, it does. Like it, cellular. It, it, it almost looks like skin cells, yeah. right? Yeah. But also it yeah, looks like there we go. Cracker Jacks. Uh, this is. It does look a little like Cracker Jacks. Yeah. This is the highest resolution photo of the surface of video. the sun or I guess video. Yeah. Ever, ever taken. Mm -hmm. And so you can see wow. the coronas blarping out. You can see the, the, I mean, it really looks like 1997 po Kai's power tools in, <laughs> in Photoshop, but, uh, yeah. but wow. Uh, these cells, each of these individual bubble nodule cells is about the size of Texas. Wow. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So uh, in fact, we have a, a these are all, yeah, these are all just, uh, a, a combusting and exploding and just being awesome yeah so this is uh new footage from the in wow the inoye solar telescope uh and thank you to sunbun for posting this in the discord uh just a little just a little it's always good to take a look at the stars hey so i got a question for you guys uh you might have stumbled yeah, across this bryce but uh justin what's your guess on the temperature of the surface of the sun oh Oh, uh, well, I mean, certainly it would be enough that Smash Mouth could walk on it. <laughs> um, However, they are made of diamonds, so keep that in mind. Yeah, you might as well be walking might on well the sun, according to <laughs> those, those jokers. Um, I don't know. Wow, I, I, I couldn't even think of... You know, a, a, a billion D, a billion D degrees. I, I have no, I, I have no clue. Bryce, do you have a guess? Um, I don't know the answer to this. I would maybe guess, I mean, I don't know, a million degrees Celsius. Uh, you would think, but it's, uh, yeah, let me double check this, but I believe it's 4,100 degrees Kelvin, which would make it just under 4,000 degrees Celsius, which would make it around, what, 8,000, 9,000 degrees? 6,700 Fahrenheit. Yeah. Uh, that's still hot. That oh, is still no, hot. No, it's, it's still very hot, but so much colder than you would dare think, right? Yeah. I guess I guess it's a marathon heat, right? It's not the sun's not exploding. Correct. Yeah. It's not like it's not like a, a, a supernova, I'm sure. That's where you'll see those those millions of degrees yeah. uh all at once. But but as an ongoing furnace, uh <laughs> that's that's roughly four times the heat of a campfire. Wrap your mind around that. It's about four times hotter than a campfire. Only it's the mass of of you know hundreds and hundreds of Earths. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, Amazing. apparently, uh, a supernova can be as hot as one hundred billion Kelvin. That's that's more than four thousand. It's more than four thousand. <laughs> but goodness, I that's incredible. I guess we we take it for granted. Uh, or I uh, know we sun hot sun hot yeah and that's, but, but, that's but think thinking. about this we have made fires on the planet earth that are hotter than the surface of the sun and it's not even that hard in fact uh i believe the temperature of like a lightning bolt is much much more than the surface of the sun uh Here, let me look at the the temperature of the lightning bolt i mean that would make sense because electricity well i don't know J justin have you ever been struck by lightning <laughs> I have never been struck by lightning. No, no, mm. I, I, I am not. Although I was once by a campfire. Oh. Okay. So all right. I, all right. We're, we're I, gonna do. Close. That's close. We're gonna do a second round okay. to our silly game that I just injected. What do you think the temperature of a lightning bolt is? Because that's. Oh, I'm gonna say half a, half a billion D. 
I went a billion D for the sun. I'm going to say half a billion D for the bolt of light. Okay. Uh, are, uh, is your answer, in, should I try to guess in Kelvin? Sure. Okay. I mean, and by the way, for the uninitiated, Kelvin is just uh, Celsius, mine, you know, with, with an extra uh, like 30 gap to absolute something. zero. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Like uh, 270, I think. Um, so it's 30 or 200. I don't know science. Um, I would guess the sun is 4,000. So I would guess 6,000 Kelvin. Get this. Uh, depending on the various entries here, I see 30,000 Kelvin, 28,000 Kelvin, 30,000 Kelvin, 28,000 Kelvin. So, uh, so we need to send lightning to the sun. Uh, no, wait, no, we want to stop global warming. <laughs> that's, that's what that movie Sunshine forgot is like, why don't you just throw lightning at it, bro? Start it up again. <laughs> yeah. We're, yeah, we're going to shoot the sun with lightning. <laughs> we're, we're, yeah. All right. First, start the global shuffling of feet. <laughs> now, everybody, yes. hold your finger up and approach slowly. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it starts to crackle, and then a gigantic, uh, you know, a, a lightning bolt forms. Billy Bob Thornton drops all of his papers on the floor as he's watching the monitors in the Pentagon. <laughs> what? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, what? You hear that? Oh my gosh. Is that uh, a sports song or a news song? It's a sports song. The big game happened. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we have. Oh, that's hilarious. Of course, we have to recap <laughs> the Python Ball! Pythons versus spiders. Uh, yeah. Are, are uh, y'all ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, last week, the Python Bowl happened in Florida, the Florida Python Bowl, uh, where uh, where hunter where people are encouraged to go and find and uh, oh, capture this is because pythons are an invasive species. They're very invasive. Yeah. Oh, and this is this has been controversial. We've been covering this since uh since it first went into effect out there in the everglades but but uh yeah it, it's controversial because some everybody can agree that the pythons are invasive and that they are harming some of the uh, natural resources out there mm -hmm. everyone can agree that it's not ideal but uh and and probably on a population level you could take down that population but it's very controversial even with people who think that it would be great if all these pythons just drop dead tomorrow because people that go out there don't realize that the Everglades are really dangerous. There's a million ways that things can go wrong that you can injure yourself, if not kill yourself. And and I think initially this was a more expansive thing. It was just like, hey, you can kill as many pythons as you want in the Everglades 24-7. And now it is uh, uh, restricted. So now, like, at, at the very least, you are going to not just have some random dude get drunk and go into the Everglades. This is going to be pro people who kind of know what they're doing if they can only do it for one day. Well, so what I saw in the reporting is that you still can go and uh, uh, hunt uh, pythons at any time as long as you have permission of the landowner. Oh, maybe. Okay, yeah, maybe. Uh, so, uh, maybe, maybe they didn't restrict it then. Uh, we got a little quiz for you. Python bowl quiz. Catch it. Go. So the Python bowl takes place over 10 days. How many pythons did the winner of the Python Bowl catch? Ooh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to uh, hide the fact that Bryce already showed the answer on screen. No, I didn't. Uh, and I will say no, I somewhere between seventy nine and eighty one. What's funny is I was gonna say seventy two, so that's the neighborhood. But I guess if I was gonna pick the over or the under, I'll, I'll take the over. I'll I'll, I'll say uh, ninety. Uh, so overall, hunters caught eighty pythons across this, the Python Bowl. That's it. Well, uh, uh, oh, yes. okay. But oh, that with was that the knowledge number, in mind, because that's the yeah. headline: hunters put the squeeze on eighty snakes in Python Bowl. The single gotcha. person who caught the most over the ten days, how many did they catch? Where's Hunter? Um, I'm gonna guess. I will say. I'm gonna guess that that the winner is gonna be the winner by a lot. So I'll I'll say twenty. Say twenty. Yeah, I'll go even higher. I'll, I'll say thirty one, thirty one pythons. That that somebody's got it on a 
got it on a rail, man. Like they 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 know how to hunt pythons like none no one's ever hunted them before. Ooh, wow. Uh the grand prize winner is Mike Kimmel. He caught eight Burmese pythons. That's not Damn. that's as low as the temperature of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's much lower than I thought. <laughs> it's I mean they're big yeah. I think Well I, you might as well be Python hunting on the sun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I wonder if it's it's captured right. So I wonder if this is like not you're not allowed you not allowed to count kills. I bet you could kill a lot of pythons easier than capturing. Why would why would there be a benefit to capturing them? Huh. Uh, I guess for this bowl. Uh, so uh, second question: the longest python that was caught, how long was it? Twenty six get- feet. 26 feet, says Brian. Oh, wow. That's aggressive. But I, I, I think he's right. Not as aggressive uh, as these sails here on the sun. 30, 35 <laughs> feet. Everything must go. 35. Hydrogen, helium. <laughs> You're both, uh, both a little over. The uh, longest python collected by Tom Rahill was 12 feet, 7.3 inches. Uh, and it was 62 pounds, the heaviest. He got $4,000 for catching. 62 pounds is the impressive figure to me on that one. That's a, that's a big one. Mm-hmm. All right. So imagine you are literally out in the Everglades, which Ryan and I have, have been out on like a a fan boat that was there to be picturesque. And even then, you realize very quickly that you are in a world of trouble if your boat dies or uh, specifically like, like we're, we're, we're all spoiled because you know, in a GPS world, you know where you are or whatever. There are no markers like in a pre GPS world that engine goes out. I, I legitimately don't see how you track where you are at all. You're just like, I guess I die. Uh, (laughs) I'm dead. I'm dead now. But imagine you are out there and, and you know, that means that you're probably out there in the morning when there's low visibility, at night when there's low visibility, and you catch a 12-foot python. I kind of feel like $4,000 is low. I feel like we need to get <laughs> that up to 10000 Like, that is, yeah. like, a, 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 the, that, is, that is shockingly low for, for the, the – effort that it would take to get you know get that money and that was a double prize that was two thousand for being the longest and two thousand for being the heaviest (laughs) (laughs) oh imagine if you had to split it how salty you'd be so uh it's like uh congratulations you got up at the crack of nothing was there captured it uh uh here is the fee for a magic performance at a community college (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> exactly right it's just like oh because ted over there showed up with a 15 foot snake that is so thin like a jump rope it doesn't weigh much <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's uh that's your python ball hey, everybody big good big game everybody good big game uh you guys want to do picks yeah we'll do a pick uh so uh, i watched a show that uh i thought of watching all on my own with no help whatsoever nobody <laughs> recommended it i discovered it on my own i evaluated it on my own and i've decided that uh that i like the outsider it's uh it's slowing down mid-season for this, me this week's episode was very transitional it was yeah not a lot happened but the other the previous four episodes are strange really strong very strong very bold start uh i will comment also uh, a bit of a preview of what's coming up on uh uh cord killer spoilering time uh the second episode of picard was nowhere near in the same neighborhood as the first i was really Really? surprised by that yeah it it, it slowed down considerably but we'll see i wonder how long that season order is eight ten probably like eight yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that's not a good length to start slowing down on number two uh, well, but to some people, it'll start to feel more like traditional Star Trek, right? Because the, that was one of the complaints people had is that it was too much like a, like a movie and not enough like the TV show. But meanwhile, I'm like, oof, this, this, is, this is soft. Yeah. It's like, you know, like sometimes that enterprise or that, that uh, next generation pacing, you're like, whew. Man, <laughs> can we just skip to the part where these aliens are obviously evil? It's like, like woo, we're so we're gonna we're gonna time. walk all the way down this hall together, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and now we're in a, an elevator, are we? <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I you know I saw that they've got Picard, the first episode of Picard on YouTube, so I might I might give it a try via that. But do you think do you think if if you don't have much of a Star Trek lineage, that there's much there for you? I think there'll be enough there for you. There's definitely a big nostalgia play, but by the second episode, maybe it was just this one episode, but it was like, it was almost like two separate shows. One where it's like, now those characters that we were developing with the intrigue and the plot and the things, and then just every so often go to an old man say like, Oh, and then go back. <laughs> I mean, it was really, it was really weird. Oh <laughs> uh, man. Uh, Justin, you got to pick. Uh, you know, obviously I've been all consumed with the, with, with, with the caucus out here. So, uh, uh, my, my pick is going to be Arrested Development, which I go to sleep every night and, and watch Arrested Development because I just know that I'm not missing anything. Oh, you know I'm what? Missing. Along that so, line, let me give a tip of the hat. I don't think I've told you, Bryce, uh, Bonnie and I started wa- watching Shit's Creek. Oh, it's great. Oh. Isn't it? It's really great. Yeah. The final season is airing now on, uh, on pop. Yeah, I'm only uh, three episodes in right now, I think. It's really good. And once they get into the groove of like developing the characters a little more, it, it gets even better, I think. Yeah, you could tell that on the first couple of episodes, like just everybody is so imminently hateable. And it's like, well, this is unsustainable. They're, they're going to have to make me like somebody at some point. And so uh, yeah. I assume that happens. Yeah. Yeah. I, you, the, 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 the show kind of, I think, makes the right choices on what elements to double down on Mm. because there are like, there's a million different shows like that. Right. Uh, uh, of like rich people mixing it up with the hoi polloi. Uh, but Schitt's Creek is just, it it is, it is remarkable for, for how much like, I think the, the the way that, uh, Dan Levy had, uh, described it in press for the news for, for the final season is that, uh, you realize that they're just aliens who have landed on earth. Yeah. And, it's like it's not their fault that they miss home and it's not their fault that you know they find everything so strange uh it is you 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 judge them for the fact that they have heart to try and and make things better but, yeah by by the uh, end just, of just by the end comedy of, murderers row uh by by the end of the second uh episode i mean eugene levy is the closest to a uh a likable character that you have in our main family um but like seeing Seeing Chris Elliott get Moira to slap him and and the weird uh, hungry sexual tension from his wife during it and all that was was a pretty great moment when she turns around and, and slaps him. Yeah, yeah, they're uh, man, I, I, I'm I'm so pumped for you to go through uh, the the these seasons because you know there there are moments by the the second to last. I mean, I, I haven't seen any of the stuff that's aired so far, but um, like it probably is the show that I, I love the most that's like on now that has like the biggest heart, you know, and even when, you know, there's something like good place, which obviously does trade on a lot of, uh, you know, this friendship and learning and growth and stuff like that. Uh, it, it doesn't have the same kind of just beating raw emotion of, uh, of, of something like, like Shit's Creek, which I was not expecting when initially I was like, Oh, I guess, it's, you know, it's just a lot of these, uh, you know, best in show people doing another television show. Hey, with without spoiling anything, um, did did you watch the last uh, four endings of The Good Place? Uh, no. Okay. I have, I have I've been out here in Iowa. Okay. Well, well I mean, I've, 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 hot take, not a spoiler, but it's like felt like that show wrapped up, and then they had another episode that wrapped it up even tighter. Then they had two more episodes, <laughs> just wrap it up even more. It was really weird. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll talk more about that on Court Killers, CourtKillers.com. Yeah, uh, I got a pick. So I was watching um, the new season of BoJack Horseman. They put out the last episodes of BoJack Horseman, and that's now ended. And uh, this is fine. Uh, but I got a recommendation <laughs> from Tom Merritt about something that he uses to keep track of TV. And uh, he got me onto Tracked, T-R-A-K-T. And I tried to log in, and I could not get it to log me in. But... Um, uh, it's like a platform that follows, that knows what you watch. So I use I use an app called uh, Watched W A T C H T on the phone, and it uh, uh, it it knows what I'm watching, 
and it uh, I tell it when I watch something, and so it keeps a little carousel like here are the things that you're watching. You're watching True Detective, and you're watching The Witcher, and Terrace House and stuff. And also like it schedules, it shows you the schedule of stuff that's coming up uh, in you know uh, like a calendar view, and I really dig it. Uh, it's it's a really interesting way to keep track of stuff, and more than that, figure out what I want to watch. Because I, I have not really gotten in the groove of using the Apple TV app, which has got its up next feature. I never really got into using that, and it doesn't. And, work and, on and in theory, that's what that is supposed to be is is the the universal hub that guides right. you through all your stuff. Right, but that doesn't track if you watch something on your computer or if you watch something. Technically, it should walk, work if you watch something on your phone. A, most but it Netflix also, stuff it also in most doesn't... regions doesn't work. Yeah, no, it doesn't work with Netflix. Yeah. Like that's that's the the big thing is they're they're the eight hundred pound gorilla, so it's always gonna have this massive hole in it. Um, although it is good, like there's some shows where I'll I'll use the 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 TV thing, but that's really really cool. Tracked, you said? Yeah, T R A K T. Uh, the free account has a bunch of stuff. There are plenty of free apps, so it's all like an API. So they don't have their own official app. There are a bunch of tracked apps, like for your phone. Uh, if you use Plex or um, another uh, any sort of media server, it can actually scrabble what you watch. So if you have content from somewhere else, uh, <laughs> it will know that and it will follow. It can track those automatically. Um, I I think it's really cool and uh, I I really like it because it, it it takes the guesswork out of like what should I watch. I just, I'm just looking at my Apple TV and there's like I don't know what to watch. So. I can go and pull the thing up and say, oh, you know, I was watching Community. Why don't I keep watching Community? Oh, you know, I'm still in True Detective. I'm in a True Detective mood. Um, I think it's a little bit of work to keep to hit the button when you watch something, but I think it gets you out of that, like, the the what do I watch question um, in a really yeah. good way. Cool. That's, a, that's, a, that's the tool you can use. There you go. Uh, tracked everybody. All right. Well, that's going to do it here for weird things, uh, for Brian and Jason, Justin uh, and Jason keep going. It's great. Um, Brant, you're crushing it. And, and everyone else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's been the weird things podcast. It's been weird. <laughs> I like it when it's so you that messes up and not me. Loud. That's fun. <laughs> oh man. Hey, everybody. We did a good show. Uh, let's uh, take a few moments and come Man, back for Talking Apple about a good show. I was thinking uh, about how funny that, that last night attack was. I was really pleased with it. That was good. Oh, yeah, dude. Um, actually, well, actually, I think I might have to bow out of After Things. Okay. okay. I think uh, uh, maybe, I think maybe we'll just call it for, 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 yeah. for the day then because I, I, I don't know immediately what yeah. we talk about for After Things. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. and I got to pick up my, my kid, anywho, okay. and uh, uh, I have a decent bit of work for cord killers to do. All right. Well, thank uh, you, everybody, for joining us here uh, uh, when you did. Yeah, I'm going to go see what I can see for these uh, last few hours before the caucus. Yeah, find a good story for Night Attack tomorrow. How about that? Oh, um, yeah. We've also got the Bizarre Briefing coming up in the afternoon tomorrow, so keep an eye out on that. Friday, we're back with the second half of Kentucky Route Zero which is super cool and super weird. Um, all the other stuff. Thank you, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.